will be fine. Can everybody hear me? All right. Hello, good evening. My name is Krista. And until the last few years, I really didn't know anything about depression or suicide. I mean, these topics just weren't a part of my world when I had a friend that called me in the middle of the night crying, needing help. She said that there was, um, that no one was going to miss her when she was gone, that her family would be better off without her. I mean, I was stunned, shocked, um, and I was scared. And I didn't know what to do because she had told me not to tell my mom. Well, I mean, my mom answered the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning. Of course, she wanted to know what was going on. And my mom told me that if I couldn't tell her about it, then I needed to, t uh, I needed to tell a counselor at my school. So I went to talk to my counselor, and, and she talked to my friend and her mom. And my friend ended up getting counseling and getting involved with dance and swimming. And she's very good now, and she's doing much better today. But. That wasn't the, um, while that was the first eye-opener, another big eye-opener for me was the son of a family friend dying by suicide. And I was so sad I didn't understand why this had to happen. So I began volu my t uh, volunteering my time with Pick with Austin and to, learn, uh, to try and learn more to how I could help. I have learned more about depression and suicide among teens, and I wanted to share some of what I have learned with you. So... To begin with, I would like um, to answer the question on why you should be concerned about suicide. I mean, suicide is rarely an impulsive decision. A lot of people go through, and if they're thinking about suicide, they've most likely thought a lot about suicide. And in the days and hours before someone acts on this idea, it may be very likely that they offer clues to friends, roommates, or colleagues, classmates, even teachers. So therefore, your awareness of suicide could possibly save a life. Then how will I know if my friend is at risk for suicide? So people who feel suicidal usually communicate these to others through words or actions. They may talk about their intentions to die, or they may threaten to commit suicide. They may make an attempt to kill themselves. But whether or not the reasons that they give um, and their actions make sense to you, you can't dismiss their indications lightly. So a couple of signs that you might want to look for are within verbal statements, um, people talking about nothing matters anymore, or I'm thinking of just ending it all. Nobody cares or nobody is going to miss me when I die. I feel like killing myself. Now, behaviors might be a little harder to pinpoint. Um, difficulty functioning at home, work, or in school settings. Uh, focus on morbid or negative themes, writing stories, articles, letters, emails, focusing on their own death getting affairs in order, and giving away valued possessions. Now, these might all be normal things. I mean, zombies, anything. But coupled, <laughs> coupled with um, sleeping pills are behaving recklessly, um, changing in eating habits, sleeping, or normal activities, feeling overly tired. All of these statements and actions need to be taken seriously. These are indications or causes for concerns under any, um, under any circumstances, and are especially so if they happen to be close to a um, significant change or loss in someone's life, like a, a death in the family or a relationship breakup, you know, exams, uh, problems at work, anything like that. So you might be asking yourself, what can I do to help? Well, the first thing you can do is just listen. That's one of the biggest things that you can do. Listen with compassion and acceptance, without rejecting, without analyzing, comparing, or categorizing, or even giving advice. The first thing you need to do is just listen, and you need to understand the person's perspective and not your own perspective. Then you need to remain patient. Your friend may not be immediately comfortable with telling you or welcoming your concern. Stay supportive and focus, focusing on how, you, um, how much you care for this person. Express your concern without expecting your friend to, um, without expecting your friend to change how they feel. Don't bargain and keep secrets. 
especially don't let this person convince you that it's not serious. Don't let this person convince you that they can handle it on their own. Don't bargain with someone who is suicidal. People who have been People who have made suicidal threats or attempts can often be very effective at persuading their friends to keep silent about what they have done. And the last thing you can, um, one of the biggest things that you can do is to make sure that you have enough support for yourself. You don't have to deal with this alone. Um, if you are concerned about someone, you can call Pick With Austin or the Blue Bonnet Trails Community Service. Um, we have some brochures up the, at the front if you're looking for those um, hotlines or your campus counseling center even, and consult with a professional about how to proceed. It's also possible that as an individual, you may have limited power to help someone who is suicidal. So if you are someone you know needs help, please call the Crisis uh, Intervention Hotline at 1-800-841-1255. Now, I just want to close by reading this piece about bullying that was written by a Leander resident and parent, Lindsay Jane Cruz House. Bullying. Imagine the isolation. Now you see the world through a window. On one side of the glass, happy, untroubled people. And on the other side, you. When parents are left with no way to turn to take action against school districts, they do so because they are left feeling like they have nowhere else to turn. They are left feeling isolated, alone, and in despair that the bullying will continue in our schools that other children will have their lives ruined, their academic chances thwarted, and sadly, some of them may even be driven to end their own lives. These families sue the school districts as a resort, not for monetary gain. Their hope is that there will be a change in the failings of the districts to take action. Yet, year after year, the districts throws taxpayer monies into the pockets of lawyers to fight against these family cases. Indeed, the district's insurance may cover a large, if not the full amount of the case's cost, but I am certain that the insurance premium schools face are only going to increase the issues of bullying. Are not addressed educationally and without set disciplinary actions and the procedures being in place and followed. Prevention is better than a cure in the long run and more financially frugal. In my personal view of bullying, in the year of 2013, I hope that people can take a stand. I want children and parents and teachers to know that they are not facing the issues of bullying alone. With each day an estimated 160,000 students in the USA alone refuse to go to school because they dread physical and verbal aggression of their peers. Many more attend schools in a chronic state of anxiety and depression, often leading to suicide. Also, recent studies have shown that 25% of school bullies will be convicted in a criminal offense later in their life. Bullying is clearly costing our, society, um, our society's future greatly. Bullying wrecks lives of the bullies and the bullied. Bullying costs a huge amount of money as it is not already being addressed and countless resources are being consumed by tackling truancy, reduced student retention, low teacher morals, and negative perceptions of schools, and parent hostility. Schools are rightly sued for failing to provide safe learning environments and are being held liable for the harassment. Violence and suicides caused by bullying. There is often a lack of accountability within schools, within families, within our own societies as a whole. Without taking a stand, speaking out, and working together as a whole, we can only pray that no more lives will be lost. Sometimes, praying just isn't enough. Thank you for coming tonight. If you'll excuse me, I do happen to have a lot of homework. <laughs> Thank you, Krista.